Good morning and welcome to Flashpoint. 11 million families, one in four Americans are underwater on their mortgage, meaning that their mortgage is more than what their home is actually worth. It is a crisis. It is an epidemic. And it is, it is facing probably thousands of you that are watching us here this morning on Flashpoint. So today, we're going to bring you some advice, some help. A lot of initiatives have been announced in the past couple of weeks. We want to make sure you understand what to do if you're in crisis or you know someone who is. So today, it's all about avoiding foreclosure here on Flashpoint. And joining me to help us through this topic today, I have David Chandler Hicks. Uh, he's been a member of the Florida Bar Association since 1993. He's a third generation Floridian and grew up in Pinellas County, where he's been a private practice since 1998. He earned a Bachelor of Science in Journalism and Communications from the University of Florida, uh, then went on to Loyola University's College of Law. Upon graduation, he worked for the Hillsborough County Public Defender's Office as a staff attorney before serving as counsel for several litigation firms, having gained extensive experience in public and private sectors. Mr. Hicks opened the Alliance Legal Group focused on defending homeowners' rights. And here today, he is actually um, representing a not-for-profit organization called the Neighborhood Community Foundation. It is based um, out of the west coast of Florida. But you all are here in town. You're going to be in Daytona Beach this week on Tuesday night doing a special free workshop for people who need help. What is the one thing that you're telling people off the bat um, that they need to understand if they're in crisis when it comes to their home or their mortgage? Well, from what we've seen, the banks just aren't providing people answers or reasonable solutions when it comes to their mortgage problems. What people need to do is they need to sit down, they need to consult with a professional, have somebody explain to them the, the climate that we are facing here in our state regarding loan modifications, regarding going through a foreclosure, regarding short sales, getting information that will empower them to make the best decision for them and their family. It is just such a massive problem. And as much as the aid will help some people and the modifications have helped some people, it makes it 10 times more confusing. Absolutely. And as much as the aid will help people, even the most optimistic people look at the new programs that have been rolled out to help maybe 1.5 million people nationwide. In our state right now, half of the people who carry mortgages are turned upside down, or as we call it, underwater. They, mo they owe more on their home than what it's worth. All right, the latest statistics show that there are actually three cities in Florida in the top ten. Let's take a look at those right now. Here are the cities uh, that are in the top ten when it comes to underwater mortgages. Number nine, Lakeland, Winter Haven. More than 50% of the homes are underwater. Unemployment there is 12%. We have number eight on the list as well, Port St. Lucie. 50.89% of the homes are underwater. Unemployment there is 12.8%. And number five on the list, this is in the entire country, Orlando, Kissimmee, Sanford. 53.42 of the homes are underwater, and our unemployment is 10.3%. But we also have a much higher percentage of people who actually have mortgages. So we were already, you know, set up to fail in this climate anyway, because we have more people who don't outright own their homes than the rest of the country here in Central Florida. That's true. Uh, and really, these problems, even though we've picked out a few different cities, the, our entire state has been feeling the repercussions of this epidemic. It seems just to go uh, in phases. Uh, down in South Florida, in Charlotte County, Lee County, Dade County, it's been horrific, the mortgage crisis, what it's done to people and their families, uh, in the Tampa area as well. So there hasn't been any part of our state that's been immune to this. All right, let's talk about um, uh, about a week ago, President Obama announced that they would extend the mortgage mortgage refinancing program in an effort to provide relief to those people. Um, there are changes that they've made to the two-year-old home affordable refinance program that will help owners with little or no equity in their houses refinance by cutting the cost of doing it and removing caps to give deeply underwater borrow borrowers access to the program. So essentially just more people have access to this affordable homes program? Well, there will be more people uh, able to have access. Uh, the previous rules said that if you were more than 125 percent upside down on the value to, of your loan versus the value of your house, that you weren't eligible for any of the government programs. There are some problems, though, with the new programs as well, in that if you've missed a payment within the last six months on your mortgage, 
uh, you're not eligible for these programs. If you one payment. One payment at any time during the course of, uh, of the loan, you're not going to be eligible for this. And, and how so, many people does that eliminate oh and the goodness. people you've been dealing with? It, it eliminates thousands of people. All right, so let's start from the beginning. If you are someone who is starting to have a hard time making your payments, what is the first thing that you do? Well, we tell people, don't bleed to death. Don't wait until you're broke before you reach out for help. Take action while you still have resources. Sit down with somebody and say, hey, I can pay my mortgage today, but if I keep doing this in three or four years, I'm going to be broke and we're going to be in a real bad situation. While you still have the ability to do so, reach out for help, get the advice of a professional and move forward on the action. And so what does the professional do at that point? Go for a modification? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. If you've waited until you're being sued for foreclosure, your options are a little bit more limited, but there are plenty of pre-litigation strategies that a professional can help you with. Uh, requesting mediation pre-litigation. It allows you an opportunity to sit down with the lender. Uh, many people have a great deal of difficulty even getting their lender on the phone to discuss some type of amicable solution to the problem. We hear horror stories all the time of somebody says, well, I've been on the phone for six months with Bank of America and we're real close to getting a loan modification. And I always have to stop and say, six months? What more could they need from you? So what, you know, I, and we did a huge expose on loan modifications, and I think we helped to remodify, uh, you know, hundreds of people who actually called Local 6. So we saw how difficult it was for people. But at the same time, how long at this point in time should a remodification take? Where are the banks now? Because this process didn't really begin until about, what, eight? months ago where they were really getting hot and heavy with the remodifications? Well, they say getting hot and heavy, but I, I really don't see it. Unfortunately, right now, the uh, court-ordered mediation programs, they just put out some numbers that showed only about 4% of the people who attend mediations wound up getting a deal. 4%. Hmm. So 96% of the people went there expecting to have some type of at least reasonable offer made to help them with their problem, only to come away empty-handed. And how long is it taking? I mean, if someone is in the middle of that process right now, what is the realistic amount of time they should wait? It shouldn't take your bank more than a month to make a decision about whether or not they can give you a loan modification. Okay. We hear plenty of excuses from the banks. We hear outright lies and stories. Um, Sarasota Herald Tribune had a great quote uh, January of this year in which they said banks are totally and intentionally dysfunctional. Uh, they would tell people you have to be in default on your loan in order to qualify for a loan modification. Well, that they, doesn't make any sense, right? But we, we don't need to modify your loan if you're current. Why would we modify your loan if you're current? Mm, okay. You're paying us on time all of the time. You need to go in default in order to qualify for one of our programs. Oh, and if you go in default, don't worry. We won't pursue a foreclosure while you're working out a loan modification. It's another lie from the banks. Uh, it's called dual tracking. They would talk to people about getting a loan modification. They'd tell them to go in default on their loan. And then while they were discussing loan modifications with these people, they would sue them for foreclosure. And they're still doing this? Absolutely. Okay. What banks are doing that? All the banks do that right now. There's 17 banks nationwide that are being investigated for fraudulent foreclosure practices. Bank of America, which uh, I still believe is the largest lender, I think that there's been some discussion recently about whether they are or not. They're being sued right now by three different states, Washington, Arizona, and Nevada. And those states are alleging widespread fraud and outright deception in dealing with people who are seeking loan modifications. It's like they went to a con man. Widespread fraud and outright deception. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what, I'm going to take a break. This is a good place to start because there is now, uh, just this week, uh, there's now an actual website that you can go to if you think you've been, uh, you know, if you've been sued for foreclosure inappropriately or wrongly, the government is, is going to try to help you with that to get you an independent review. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll also get some more advice as we head down the ladder of what what to do if you're in trouble with your mortgage. We've talked about loan modification, what is the next step for you, and what you need to look out for here on Flashpoint. Stay with us. All right, Tuesday night at the Daytona Beach Hilton, from 7 to 9, a free foreclosure workshop. David will be there and other people from the uh, neighborhood 
Community Foundation. Community, thank you. Mm -hmm. Neighborhood Community Foundation, a non for profit organization that tries to prevent people from losing their homes. All right, so we've gotten to the remodification, which you say is very difficult for people to get anyway. Uh, so at that point in time, I've tried to remodify my loan. It's getting bad. I've lost my job. I've been at this for six or seven months. I am going to start missing payments. What does someone do then? Again, they should sit down with a professional and figure uh -huh. out how to plot their strategy. Uh, for a lot of people we see, they don't get any action from the banks until they are actually in foreclosure. The banks assume that most people will not adequately respond to the foreclosure complaint. Right now, I think the statistics show that over 80% of the people who are being sued for foreclosure do not adequately respond to the complaint. What does adequately respond mean? Basically, the summons that you will be served says that you have 20 calendar days to respond to the complaint that's been levied by the bank. And so you have to go count by count and refute the allegations that the bank has made. If you do not do so in a timely fashion, uh, a default is entered on your case and basically it says the bank, everything the bank has said is true, and you owe these people these, this money. Uh, we've seen that once somebody is in litigation and a firewall has been put up between them and the bank, when they are represented by counsel, and now the banks see the pot prospect of prolonged litigation, uh, quite often they're more willing to sit down at the negotiation table in good faith. Now, I know I'm sitting with an attorney, so it's very difficult for me to ask this question and expect an, you know, a completely unbiased answer, but I'm, I'm assuming that because you're doing this for this nonprofit agency that you actually feel some you know, sense of people being able to do this on their own. I know you said seek help from a professional, but what would a person be out if they were then to go and get an attorney? Is it, is it possible to go through the proceedings without an attorney? Unfortunately, I'd say at this time uh, it's, a, it's a real mistake. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, not only are the banks using questionable, sometimes even illegal tactics to, to try to get people out of their homes, but some of the law firms that the banks have hired are also using the same tactics. Maybe you heard of the law office of David Stern, which was down in Fort Lauderdale. They were closed down about seven months ago by the Attorney General's office, basically for fraud and forgery in handling foreclosure cases. They handled about one out of every three residential foreclosures in our state. And it is estimated that thousands of people were wrongfully foreclosed upon by their office. Uh, the, the term robo-signer, maybe your audience is aware of, there's a great 60 Minutes piece uh, that aired about six months ago and was re-aired, I believe, last month, in which the banks would hire high school kids at $10 an hour, and they'd sit them in a room, and they would have them sign as vice president of the bank. They would sign affidavits as to how much somebody owed, as to the status of a loan, and basically uh, fraud and forgery. And so for someone to expect that they're going to show up and fight against an attorney who is there every day for the bank and forecloses every day and sits up front and knows the judge by first name, uh, you're not really going to be able to get enough information on a Google chat room that enables you to fight these people. All right, so basically you have to respond within 20 days when you actually get that notice of a foreclosure. Yeah. Um, so you respond in, in the best way that you can at this point in time, or is this when you, you have to get help and you have to respond? Because, I mean, most likely the bank's going to say, you didn't pay us, and the person's like, yeah, I know, I'm out of money. Well, that's the problem. Most people say, you know, I know I owe somebody some money. I know I've missed payments, so I must not have any options here. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest problem facing people. They choose to stick their head in the sand. They say, I'm going to wait for this storm to blow over me. But this is what's happening to people. If you do not respond to the complaint and the default is entered, that means everything the bank says is true, right down to how much money you owe. Mm -hmm. They take your home. You took out a loan back in 2007. You took out a loan for $300,000. The problem is right now your house is worth $150,000. So they take your home from you and you think, well, that's it. You know, this, shit, this is over. Well, it's not over because now they put your home up for auction and they sell it for $150,000. You still owe the bank $150,000. Mm -hmm. They have five years that they can come after you for what is called the deficiency judgment. If they procure the deficiency judgment, they then have 20 years to come back and collect that from you. Can you get out of that deficiency? Well, you can get the deficiency waived if it's part of the negotiation settlement. Okay. Now, you have some, uh, some of the things that, uh, that I saw that were going to come up in this workshop is um, lender violations. What are lender violations and why are they important for people to be able to identify them? Well, uh, right now about eight out of every ten home loans that we review show some type of lender violation. Most people don't really have any idea what protects them as a consumer. Uh, Truth in Lending Act or TILA, the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act or RESPA, and the Home Ownership and Equity Protection Act or HEPA are just three of the statutes that help protect people. 
many loans that we review show violations or one or more of these statutes. You could turn it to your advantage when negotiating a loan modification with your lender. Some could even enable you to sue your lender for damages. Um, what other of the big things that people do, uh, just mistakes that they make, whether it's a loan error or uh, something that they might have done wrong in the process that, that, that really just wrecks it for them or, or makes a huge issue down the line? Well, I, I think the biggest problem is people, you're getting ready to be sued by somebody. And so what do you do? You pick up the phone and you call that bank and you say, what should I do? And now you're relying on information from somebody who's suing you. Mm -hmm. If they had your best interest at heart, they wouldn't be suing you. If they were trying to help lead you through this turmoil, they wouldn't be suing you. And that's the biggest problem we see, is people relying on the banks to actually help them. All right now, the, um, the government has actually rolled out, the, the Federal Reserve has rolled out this special website where you can get an independent foreclosure review. It's actually independentforeclosurereview.com. Basically, if you've been foreclosed upon in 2009 or 2010, they will take another look at your foreclosure to make sure that the bank was appropriate, that they did everything correctly. And so you can go to independent foreclosure review and you can start that process along. Um, you're a little, sus not suspicious, but you're a little skeptical about whether, you know, a review by the feds would actually make a difference in most of these foreclosures? Well, I will quit being skeptical when I see one person who was wrongfully foreclosed upon get their house back. You haven't seen that yet? Mm, I, we won't ever see that. So why? Because they have decided that instead of doing what's right and reversing the wrong, they'll turn around and they'll maybe cut you a check for $500 and say sorry for your trouble. And for many people, uh, any, most of the people I represent, that won't do anything besides taking the publics a couple times. Okay, so what you're, what you're feeling is that this is just really a way for the banks to do some sort of appeasement or for the federal government to say that they're going after the banks when they're really not? Uh, it's obvious that they're not going after the banks. No one from any bank has been put in jail regarding this mortgage crisis. Uh, the most massive fraud uh, committed on this country, the collapse of the free market economy, uh, institutions like Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers ceasing to exist, and yet nobody's gone to jail. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. We will talk a little bit more about the politics involved here, um, some controversial remarks by presidential candidate Mitt Romney, and something that our own governor, Governor Rick, governor Rick Scott, uh, is attempting uh, that David wants to address here. We're talking foreclosure and avoiding it here on Flashpoint. Stay with us. Welcome back. A free foreclosure workshop presented by the Neighborhood Community Foundation at the Daytona Beach Hilton Tuesday night from 7 to 9. If you want to go ahead and register, go to neighborhood-community. Dot org, neighborhood-community.org, which you can also show up, David tell, tells me. David Hicks is a foreclosure attorney here to help us out today to, to understand this process. Um, so a lot of people are just walking away from their homes. They're just saying, I can't do it. I'm going to stop making payments, I'm walking away. What happens and why is that not a good thing? Yeah, that's a big problem for people in our state. They say, you know, I know I owe somebody some money. I know I've missed payments. I'm not really sure what to do. I've reached out to the bank. I spent two or three months on the phone with them. I didn't get anywhere, so I have no options. I'm going to quit making payments and let's just see what happens. Well, what happens, again, if you don't respond to the complaint, uh, within 20 days, a default judgment is entered against you. That means the bank has to show up one more time in court and they will get a sale date set for 35 days. Uh, the auction will occur, whoever's in the home will be evicted. The biggest problem though, you, you thought you were done with your problem, you thought you had gotten away from that debt. And unfortunately for most people in our state, the value of their home is nowhere near worth what their mortgage is. So the bank sells the home, and now the difference between what they sold the home for and what you owe them, uh, that's, that's still on your debt. That's uh, something they can come after you for. And they get what's called the deficiency judgment against you. Mm -hmm. uh, the deficiency judgment, they have up to 20 years to collect. Um, we really foresee in the future that the banks probably won't want the bad press associated with going after these deficiency judgments, so they'll end up selling them to these debt collectors for 30 or 40 cents on the dollar, and these people will be calling you on Saturday evening and Sunday morning and Monday at work and trying to pursue that debt. So it could get worse for you? Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about the politics involved here. Um, in the past week or so, uh, Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney caused a stir in Nevada. He's in Las Vegas, the number one city on that list that we talked about. Um, 
the number one city. He's talking to an editorial board there, and he said that he believed that foreclosures should be allowed to, quote, hit the bottom in order for the housing industry to recover. That if, if they just allow the banks to foreclose on all of these people, then the homes can get back into the market. People can buy those homes. They can rent out those homes. You have any problem with that? Hmm. They can't sell the homes we have right now in our state. They can't rent out the homes that are vacant right now. Every neighborhood in every county uh, we see has vacant homes, has homes that have, are in a state of disrepair. Right now the banks have basically walked away from any home that's less than $40,000 in value. They won't even try to go foreclose upon it. They'll let it sit vacant. They don't want to pay property taxes. They don't want to pay upkeep. There is a huge what we call shadow inventory right now in our state of homes and people who are caught in this, in this uh, in-between state, if you will. Technically, they're in default on their mortgage. They've missed more than three payments. But the banks haven't come after them yet because the banks don't know what to do with their house. The bank's not even sure if they want their house. Uh, with the glut of houses that is still out there right now and unemployment at higher than a national average rate, to think that by speeding up foreclosures and getting all of the homes on the market is going to help, I do not see the logic in that. I don't even see uh, how conceivably it could work. Well, it would, would it help the banks in the end? I mean, they, it seems like they don't want to go after the banks because they're afraid it will hurt our economy. They want the banks to get back on their feet and to be stronger. It, that's not part of the equation, you don't think? Well, they definitely don't want to hurt the banks because they sure haven't held the banks very liable. The only people right now who seem to be holding the banks liable are the people on Wall Street, uh, people who are suing the banks for selling them fraudulent investments. Mm -hmm. uh, our government is suing the banks for selling them fraudulent investments. Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae have lawsuits against 17 lenders regarding the sale of tainted mortgage-backed securities. Um, so yes, they, they definitely want the banks to do better. The problem what we're having is if the banks are going to do better, how about the common person? How are they going to do better? All right, I wanted you to be able to get to what you were concerned about, Governor Rick Scott. You said it, he wants to try to bring the court, get the courts out of foreclosure, you say? We are a judicial state here in the state of Florida. Governor Scott has recently introduced legislation that would turn us into a non-judicial state. By non-judicial, that means if you were being sued for foreclosure, you wouldn't have your day in court. It would be a non-judicial process, and the bank could basically show up, present their paperwork, and that would be that. Uh, for this type of legislation to be introduced after the massive fraud that the banks have committed on the citizens of the state of Florida, to, to now think that they are going to fall in line, the banks, and do everything the right way with no supervision, with no court supervision, I find just ridiculous. All right. David Hicks, thank you so much for being here. Again, free workshop at Daytona Beach Hilton on Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Um, hopefully you'll be getting some help. If you ever miss Flashpoint, you can catch it on ClickOrlando.com under Scene on 6. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a great week, and tell your friends about Flashpoint.